Hi, I'm Sherry from Homeschooling on a Wing and a Prayer blog, and today I thought I would show you some of the things that we would use to do a nature study. If you're new to the concept or you're not sure how to pull one off, don't panic. It is actually one of the easiest subjects to teach your children, mainly because they are normally very curious about the world around them, but also because you can keep it as simple or you can jack it up to as detailed as you want to, depending on the time you have and the student's ability. So the nice thing is you can cater it to your family. Love that. Anyways, one of the things I highly recommend are having some books that you can use for your base knowledge reference. This happens to be my favorite, Handbook of Nature Study by Anna Comstock. This book is laid out actually in lessons. So for instance, if we're discussing the monarch butterfly, I would come here and there's couple pages worth of info and then she'll have some questions at the end and then she'll talk about different parts of it and then go on talking about different type of butterflies and so forth. You can take it lesson by lesson which I do not or you can do what I do which is just simply go in there find info on whatever it is we are studying and then go through it. This happens to be one of my favorite. It's worth the money. You can also buy these for the most part used so you don't have to pay full price, but I love this book. All right. Another one I came across is Keeping a Nature Journal because it's always nice to see how people do this. And so this is by Claire Leslie and Charles Roth. And the nice thing is, let me open it up here. Sorry, it's really hard to do this with one hand. It talks about getting started, what you would do Obviously, a person new to this would not be drawing like that, so keep that in mind. Uh, a five-year-old is probably going to do small, quick little drawings. Be sure, if you can't figure out what it is and they don't really know, just have them narrate and then you write next to it. So say it's a stick they found, just write that down. That way you'll always be able to go back and refer to it, and it's kind of neat to see how the child progresses, especially after they've had a few art lessons. It's a cute little squirrel there. Anyway, he go, you go through and you can see they've broken it into like the autumn, spring, fall. And at the back of the book, this is nice, it talks about getting started with drawing. It's a basic overview, and it teaches you how to pull off some of these things. I mean, the goal is to finally get your student to use some of those art techniques. So technically you're doing science and art all at the same time in different ages. So here, this is more of what you would see a young child do. And that's okay. So keep that one. It's a good one to have on hand as well. I also found these used. I do not know if you can still get them, but if you see them at a used bookstore, grab them. Nature Study the Easy Way by Cindy Rushton. She's broken this into different sections and teaches you how to go through and what to discuss, things like that. This is a really good one. The Nature Study Idea Book, even for high schoolers, by Mary Woodis. Again, this is probably not in print anymore, so you'll have to find it used. So for instance, here it's talking about the process skills of scientific inquiry. Sorry, oops. This is what I'm going to be doing with my son because we're doing geology, so I can go through here and pull a few things out that match what we're studying in his science book. So it's all very helpful resources there for you. Another fun thing I found was from Sandy Queen, and it's Nature Lessons and Copy Work. So you could have the student put this right in their art notebook. I'm sorry, nature study notebook, and you would say, "Let's." I want you to put this in your book. If they're younger, I would never have them write the whole thing. It may just be the first sentence, and then have them keep working on it until it's completed. There are some fun ones in here. Again, you can find a lot of these different types of quotes online, but it's nice to have it all in one spot, so I have that. Also, if you have children who aren't real hip on the drawing part, whether they just don't like it or it's too difficult for them, having things like coloring books comes in very handy. You can keep the page in the book or you can tear it out and have the child put it in their nature study book. That's fine too. We actually did the Audubon study and then I had my kids choose which ones they wanted to color and 
they did that and so these are very nicely detailed actual reproductions of his artwork so it was not only our artist study it was also nature study and they could put that in there this one happens to be on amphibians and reptiles which my son was loving big time i was grossing out by this but you know there's so many of these different books available so keep that in mind as well also there's all kinds of stuff you can find uh, from Considering God's Creation workbook, they have all these different type of pages that you can use. I believe you can copy these for your students in your home without breaking any copyright laws. So anyway, uh, the De Rock Detective, I'm going to be making a few copies for my son. He is working on the minerals one, which I will show in the science video down the road, but right now I wanted to highlight this. So he would uh, simply write down the colors and the name, and then he would figure out if it was, you know, metamorphic, sedimentary, or igneous, and then fill in all these little things. He doesn't have to do that much uh, drawing or handwork, but he's still learning, so it's always fun to have those. A great one, too. The tree detective. So say we're out and about, and he happens to see a you know, pine tree. Obviously, that would be what he would choose, a different type of needles and leaves and different type of cones and fruits coming from there. These are all great things that they can put in to a nature notebook. They have the zoo, they have portrait of the flower, or the flower detective, things like that. So there's all kinds of resources out there. This is a fun one for weather. Also you can um, find online some free things and some things you'll have to pay for. This is Barbara McCoy's handbook of naturestudy.blogspot.com. I can't remember if this was a freebie or if it was a part of a thing I've purchased, but then you're able to make copies for your children and so those are different ideas. This happens to be from notebookingpages.com. Again, I, I will have to go and when I list the reference um, websites, I'll check and see if they're free or not. But it gives you an idea of different ways you can notebook as well. Trees and shrubs, this is from notebookingpages.com. So they would fill that out if you want to do it like that, or you can do it in a spiral book. I've already shown this on um, my um, classroom video, what we keep in our to-go nature study kit. There's all different kinds of ways to pull this off. One of the easiest is to just have a really good sketch diary. And then you would just take this with you and your travel kit, go out into the field and draw what you see. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece. The whole idea is just looking for details. And the more you do it, the better you become. Sadly, I was not able to find my children's, which is probably hidden in their room somewhere, but this is mine from a few years ago. So we'd go out and draw and color and I would put different types of verses and things like that. I do have, like I pointed out in my video, where we are listing the Latin name, and then usually the common name and the family name, and then I could draw it. We would use different mediums. This looks like it might be watercolor. So as you're working through here, I put a whole poem in. You can do that, and it's always fun to have the kids see you do it as well, so that they can see what they can look forward to in the future, but also how to go about it. So fall leaf. So this, these sketchbooks are great. Use your uh, 50 to 40% off at like Michael's and Joanne's to get those. Or with those notebook pages I was showing you, you can put together a three ring binder with the, um, the pages here, protectors. So we would go out, this happens to be a part of, I'm pretty sure I had to pay for this one. Um, so you would write it down, the weather, and then he drew what he saw. Now he, he was pretty young when we were doing this and he didn't particularly care to draw so he asked me to help him. He did do a little bit of work but then I would write the stuff for him because it was a little bit too much for him at that time. Here he drew, here he did the paint on the back of the leaf. Here is one of those rocks. Again, pretty young. I have no idea what this is so I guess maybe a rainbow. I should have wrote it down. Here is like a page with a little bit of... Um, Copy work. Here I believe he did a crayon rub of a leaf. So this just kind of is poems and this is a fun one. This happens to be from the Handbook of Nature Study by Barbara McCoy too. 
and then they would fill that in. This was already drawn, he just colored it in. So things like that, different ways, and here's some of those pages I talked about. So you can keep one like that as well. We have two going, like I said, we have the sketchbook and then that one going at the same time. Also having good reference material on hand is always important because you can't always be running to the library. Wherever I can find these at garage sales, used book sales, I pick them up, have your little pocket books on these guides for the different things. This is a fun one I picked up, nature book, and then it's activities you can do. More for the younger kids, but hey, sometimes there's something you can use for more advanced students. Also, if you find something fun like this, this also is from Barbara McCoy. I laminate it, and then we can take it out in the field and it doesn't get ruined, and this kind of highlights the different type of pines and their cones. This was something fun. Uh, my mother-in-law was about to toss this. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. They had this way back from the early 70s. My sister-in-law, I guess, got a hold of it and doodled on it, so it's permanently laminated now. I still have to get this bound. But what I did is I went ahead and, like I said, laminated it all, and now we can use this as reference. I thought this was kind of funny. Either my husband or his sister or one of his brothers or sisters had put this in when referring to that statement there. It was kind of cute. Anyways, this has quite a bit of the local trees listed and what to look for, so this is a very handy reference material. Again, you would get this particular to your state, if you can find one like this. Um, this is from our university, so maybe you can go ahead and talk to the 4-H people and see if they have any booklets and things like that that you can purchase or get for free. Always having those kind of things handy. Also, another way to do your notebooking and your nature study is to put them into the blank bound books, and I'll have a link up for these as well. So when my son was doing this on um, plants, we went ahead and put some Bible verses in. And then as we worked through his unit, he would do different things like this. Sometimes I'd print out something and then he would just answer. He was pretty young when we did this, but he did draw all of those down there, so I was proud of him. And then sometimes you can come across a notebook sheet that you can stick in there as well. So this is kind of like notebooking, nature journaling, all in one. And then there's different things, so it's really hard to do this with one hand in there. And then he just, oops, covered in, what is this? Oh, this is a potato. So he had a real potato and then he drew it. So again, these are different ways to come across doing your nature study. Obviously, as you can see, there's not a whole lot of coloring in here. He doesn't particularly care for that, probably because he's colorblind, I don't know. Also, um, we did this animal tracks as a part of one of our science studies, and this is again, another way of pulling off your nature journaling. So, as he would go through, and we would study the different ones, we would again, put the family in there, and then he would draw the different type of tracks, and then he can always use this for reference too if he needs to, so that's in there. So that's another fun way of pulling off a nature study. Again, now these are not all of the things we would use. I would go to the library and pick up books that pertain to the area we are studying and we would refer to those. You can go online. The biggest thing is getting outside and finding these things. And then you would, as many times as you could, get out and draw a different type of species or do studies in different areas around you so you can find a different variety of things to put in your art book and stuff like that. Anyway, there's all kinds of posts and videos out on the web that you can refer to on how to do a nature study. I have a few on my blog as well, but I thought I'd just show you some of the fun things that we use to pull ours off. Alright, thanks for watching.